Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us. We're just getting started with an amazing series on Isaiah, the Gospel prophet. So much about the coming Messiah, which will be fulfilled in every detail in the life of Jesus. We're glad you're here and welcome to our Gideon's Band team. <laughs> Take a look, just five of us, but we represent the world, don't we? Yes. And we represent all of our Hope Sabbath School members, and we're just glad you're part of our family too. We have a special gift for you during this series. It's an audio book, a digital download called Radical Evidence. This book will not only cover the prophecies of Isaiah about Messiah, but all of the prophecies of the Old Testament pointing to Jesus as Messiah. We'd like to send you a free digital audio book. All you have to do is use the regular email address sshope at hopetv.org and in the subject line just put free offer we'll send you a way to download that audiobook you will be so blessed because there are also stories from today of lives that connected with Jesus and have been transformed so don't miss out on that special offer I'll tell you about that again at the end of our broadcast but we're always happy to hear from you aren't we yeah. we yes. forward to our team from you and here are just a few Bertram writes from Panama and he says I must take time to thank the Hope Sabbath School team Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm writing from Panama in Central America I attend the Berean Church where I serve as a Sabbath School teacher and active in personal evangelism Amen. Amen. your ministry is a blessing your lesson outline has helped me when I teach. Keep up the good work. Right. Well, you know, that's exciting for us to hear from you, Bertram. We literally have thousands of people downloading the outline from our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. You can download the same outline that we're using in our study today. You can be a teacher. What I do is I give an outline to everyone so we can all follow along together. Yes. Thank you for being part of our global team. Brian writes from Australia. He lives in the town of Tinoni on the bend of a river. I looked it up on the map, New South Wales. He says, I'm an Australian dairy farmer who enjoys Hope Sabbath School every week. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I find the presentations easy to understand and inspiring. Your efforts are worthwhile. And then he ends with a confession. Jesus is my Savior. Amen. Amen. Brian, thanks so much for writing to us from New South Wales there in Australia. We are glad not only that you're part of our family, Hope Sabbath School family, but that Jesus is your Savior. That's really what Isaiah's prophecies are all about. Here's a note from a donor in Virginia in the United States of America. Not being able to go to church like I used to, Hope Sabbath School has been a blessing to me. Amen. That's true, isn't it, Jamie Jean, with a lot of media right now. Yeah. Can yeah. connect people when they're locked in their homes, mm -hmm. but they don't have to be locked from the grace of God. Amen? Oh. Amen. Amen. I have grown spiritually since watching Hope Sabbath School. Mm -hmm. Keep up the good work. You are helping others grow in Christ. Oh, I love this. The Bible has come alive in me. Yes. Mm. That's even more powerful than coming alive for me, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible has come alive in me. Uh, and this donor includes a gift of $150 for Hope Sabbath School. Okay. Praise Amen. God. Mm -hmm. We're a donor-supported ministry. Thank you to the donor there in Virginia. And thank you to each one for partnering with us. We're part of a great miracle of God. All the way to India, where Kaushik Dutta writes. Mm -hmm. And he says... Best wishes to all my brothers and sisters on the Hope Sabbath School team. Mm. <laughs> I just love the studies conducted regularly. I'm from India, and I really enjoy the topics chosen and how they are taught. Mm. I pray the Lord Jesus may help us all overcome this pandemic mm. and again fill our lives with joy and peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's affecting people all around the world. Continue to share the gospel of God worldwide I'm with you to accomplish the mission to spread the love of Jesus across the globe. Amen. 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 Well, Koshik, thank you for writing to us from India. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. I was touched 
by this last note from Barbara in Alaska in the United States. She says, I live on a small island. My husband of 57 years passed away a few short years ago. Mm -hmm. Eight months later, on a Mother's Day outing, our son drowned. Oh, What a combination of mm. tragedy. Mm. I was devastated. Mm. Yeah. So we have a choice to make then, right? We either run away from God or we run to Him. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A year or so later, I discovered Hope Sabbath School on my television. Ever since, I've been a faithful viewer every week. Amen. Being a previous Seventh-day Adventist, I was thrilled to find your program. <laughs> God was calling to bless her, wasn't he? Yes. Amen. Whenever I start feeling depressed about losing my guys, mm. I remind Amen. myself that we will be together again. Amen. 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 It's difficult, writes Barbara, to find Christians who are truly experiencing a personal walk with God and who can share it in a genuine way. Thankfully, I found this with the Hope Sabbath School team. Mm. What do we say? Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God, right? Because we're just frail human beings like everybody else. Yes. But the Holy Spirit's using Hope Sabbath School. Thank you for the time and effort you put into this program. God is good and is blessing us all. Amen. 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 From a small island in Alaska. Thank you so much, Barbara, for writing to us. God bless you. And you are right. Even the prophet Isaiah we're studying right now, mm -hmm. he speaks of a day when God will make all things new. Praise yeah. God. Well, right now we're going to sing our theme song. We're not allowed to sing in the studio, so we're going to need your help. You can download the song from hopetv.org slash Hope SS. Our theme song is a scripture song from Isaiah chapter 55. It says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let's sing together. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, the topic of our study, you know, when your world is falling apart, it seems so relevant today yes. because we look around whatever country we're living in mm -hmm. and it seems that the world is falling apart. So I believe that you have brought this study from the prophet Isaiah for us, especially for this time. I pray for our team as we study together and for our Hope Sabbath School members around the world, that the Holy Spirit would be our teacher and that we would find peace and hope in you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 When your world is falling apart, 
I'm going to ask Jamie Jean if you'd start our study today Please. in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 1. And the question we want to ask as Jamie Jean reads is, what crisis did King Ahaz, son, oh, excuse me, grandson of King Uzziah face early on in his reign? Right. Let's see what it says. Well, the New American uh, Standard Bible says, Now it came about in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, the king of Aram, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem to wage war against it, but could not conquer it. Well, thank you for reading all those difficult names, Jamie <laughs> Jean. <laughs> Summary, king of Syria, king of Israel, coming to attack Judah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, there's an interesting text, uh, Jason, I'd like you to read in 2 Kings 15 and verse 37, that someone might read that and go, Jason, I do not understand what that's saying. But we've been reading in our study of, of the prophet Isaiah that Judah has wandered far away from God, right? Mm -hmm. They were even spoken of as Sodom and Gomorrah in yeah. our previous mm -hmm. study. What do you read in your Bible there in 2 Kings chapter 15 and verse 37? I've got the New King James Version here, and it says, in those days, the Lord began to send Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, against Judah. So why would the Lord do that? I thought the Lord was only good Christian, and he wants <laughs> to save everyone. Mm. Why would the Lord send two, I was going to say, more rebellious nations, mm. but certainly Israel was equally rebellious, Syria, not followers of the true God. Mm -hmm. Why would he send them against his people in the land of mm. Judah. Well, one thing I've discovered about God's character is that God will often permit trials in order to humble us, to humble our pride. Mm. And in this context, I believe he was not only doing that, but I believe God was wanting uh, to change his course of rebellion. Mm -hmm. So I think God had a much bigger picture in mind uh, in allowing this to happen. Let's see, I, I think you're right, but let's confirm that in 2 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 19. Samiso, do you have that? 2 Chronicles 28 and verse 19. Yes, 2 Chronicles 28 verse 19, reading from the New King James Version. It says, For the Lord brought Judah law because of Ahaz, king of Israel, for he had encouraged moral decline in Judah. Mm and had been continually unfaithful to the Lord. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here comes the Lord. What's his purpose in using these surrounding nations mm -hmm. to put pressure on his people? What do you think, Jamie Jane? To correct them, to get them back on track. Yeah. Try Maybe even to say, oh Lord, we've sinned <laughs> against you, right? Yes. Yes. We repent, please yes. forgive us and come and uh, come to our aid. Well, let's see what f decision uh, is made by King Ahaz, hmm. Second Kings chapter 16, verses 7 through 9. And Jason, it looks like you have that, yes. Second Kings 16, 7 through 9. We would hope he would say, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That was mm. a king named Jehoshaphat, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what, what does King Ahaz do? I've got the New King James Version here, Second Kings chapter 16, verses 7 through 9. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up and save me from the hand of the king of Syria and from the hand of the king of Israel who rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasuries of the king's house and sent it as a present to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria heeded him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, carried its people captive to Kir, and killed Rezin. Mm. Now some mm. pragmatists might say, well, that worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Samisa, you're shaking your head. What was wrong with that picture? So they had two, he had two, two options, to trust God and the message coming from his prophet Isaiah or to find a different ally and a form a coalition. And, and that's w where you really come to making choices 
do you trust God who says he will protect mm. you mm. or you trust something uh, a different person uh, mm. your job uh, what do you really trust in? Mm. Do you trust God when He says, trust me? When your world is falling apart, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was problematic about His action, certainly going to Assyria, mm -hmm. yeah. that's a godless nation, right? Yeah. But what else did He do that you're just going, wait, wait, something's mm -hmm. wrong here? He, he, he went he, into the, oh, go ahead. Go he ahead. went into like the temple and took the sacred items that were used for worship mm -hmm. as a present mm -hmm. to this right. king. Mm -hmm. So it was really just looking down upon the things of God for military gain, which is not good. And supporting what Samisa said, he comes to this pagan king and says, I'm your son. I'm, I'm your son. son. Mm. I'm, yeah. Yeah. You know, we're, we're definitely uh, in a very difficult situation here. But like you said, he's trying to find a solution with his world falling apart, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe some other decisions have predisposed him to this foolish choice. Mm. Backtrack, if you can, Christian, to 2 Kings 16, verses 2 to 4. 2 Kings 16, verses 2 to 4. There were some other things, I mm -hmm. think, that set him on a course mm -hmm. of action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard a person say, I never thought I would do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just started walking in a certain direction away from God. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, they're doing things they never thought they would do. Mm -hmm. What were some things that were already happening, Christian? Um, I'm reading from the, the New King James Version, uh, 2 Kings chapter 16, verses 2 to 4. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord his God, as his father David had done. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. Mm. What does it mean having your child pass through the fire, by the way? Do you know anything about that, yeah. Jamie Jean? Child sacrifice to You it. know, Molech, I mean, there yeah. were these gods. When they passed through the fire, they, they were a human sacrifice, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that happened or if it was some kind of witchcraft, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. where you, the, the devil would protect you if you walk through the hot coals. But you're saying, wait a minute, all of that is mm -hmm. completely uh, denounced Yes. Mm -hmm. In the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That we should have nothing to yeah. do with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And yet here is a leader of God's people performing those things. Christian? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I would call it what it is. Um, he's given ground to the enemy. That's mm -hmm. what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when you give ground to the enemy, um, your sense of discernment, mm -hmm. you know, between right and wrong, between good and evil, uh, begins to diminish and and then you begin to behave and conduct yourself in ways that are are very um, very mm -hmm. dangerous yeah. mm -hmm. that sounds like today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when our world is falling apart and we're yep. thinking mm -hmm. why are people doing these things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So? he's also relinquishing control right mm -hmm. at the time he gives uh, these gifts to this king to appease mm -hmm. him that comes at a very high cost. Sure. Mm. And that cost is the entire nation is apostatized. Mm. So it's really important that we understand the, the, the consequences mm -hmm. of every choice every we make choice. in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it might seem convenient in the short run, mm -hmm. but in the long term, it's very You know, you're absolutely right. And Lisa, I'll come to your point. Uh, someone might say, well, it worked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Assyria came to his aid, but you're saying, mm -hmm. No, no, there's more consequences yeah. than are immediately mm -hmm. apparent, Lisa. Yes, and as you said, Pastor Derek, this was his behavior all throughout. And there's some people today who think, well, when things get back, I'll go back to God. No, how you behave now is how you will behave when things get really difficult in life. And so he showed through his character, he never trusted in God right from the beginning. 
and it says he did not do what was right, as yeah. we read at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Jamie Jean. And this also, this idea that it worked, well, my questions would be for how long yeah. and at what cost? And it reminds wow. me of this phrase that my husband often says, and that is, today's problems are usually the result of yesterday's solutions. Mm. <laughs> so you short-term <laughs> fix. Faulty solutions, right? Yeah, yeah. faulty solutions. So it's a short-term fix, but God's solutions, God's ways is eternal, and it's permanent, not human ways. Yeah. We're having some great discussion, Christian. You know, there's a proverb that uh, comes to my mind, and I think it's very applicable to, to this mm -hmm. story. Uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Would you read it for us? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Proverbs, give us a, a moment to find it. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 14. 14, verse 12. And if I remember correctly, it's repeated also in chapter 16. 16, verse 25. Because right? it's important, right? <laughs> That's right. That's How right. does it read in your Bible? Um, New King James Version, it says, There is a way that seems right mm. to a man, but its end is the way of death. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm. instead of going to a pagan monarch or some other mm. human-made solution and saying, I am your child, in other words, I yield under your authority, mm -hmm. what should King Ahaz have done? What should we do? when we face a really challenging situation and our world seems to be falling apart, Jason? Well, I think a little further in the story when Assyria actually does come against Jerusalem and is going to destroy it, thankfully it's not Ahaz that's the king there, it's his son Hezekiah, and he literally goes to God and pleads to God. Mm. He talks to Isaiah the prophet, he prays to God, so he actually consults the Lord. And that's what we should do when our world is falling mm -hmm. apart. We should go to God and say, God, mm -hmm. this is out of my hands. You take it here. There's mm -hmm. a beautiful promise in <laughs> Psalm 50, mm -hmm. verse 15. Do you know that, do you know yes. that promise, anyone? Yes. Psalm 50 and verse 15. I seem to use that an awful lot. God brings it to my mind. Jamie yes. Jean, how does it read in your Bible? The NASB says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you, and you will honor me. Our job is to honor Him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we've called upon Him, He's the one who will deliver us, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So here's this scenario, poor decision by King Ahaz. Mm -hmm. But God continues to show mercy in trying to uh, intercept King Ahaz in the course of action he's heading. Let's take a look in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 3. Isaiah 7 and verse 3. Lisa, would you read that for us? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out now to meet Ahaz, you and Shir Jeshub, your son, at the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to Fuller's Field. So uh, why do you think it mentions his... Well, first of all, why does he take his son... And secondly, why does it mention his son's name? There's got to be some significance, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a little notation in your Bible what that name, Shear Yashub, means? Yeah. Is it, so? it means a remnant shall return. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's an unusual name to name your, your son. Mm -hmm. mm. But God had in advance, oh, didn't we learn in this series that God knows the end from the beginning? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. God in advance had told Isaiah, name your son, mm -hmm. a remnant shall return. So what do you think, Samisa? Why does he say, as you go to try to intercept the king, take a remnant shall return with you? What do you think? It, it, it's a promise mm -hmm. uh, that, that is coming, that uh, this, is not going, this is not the end of things. And if you look throughout the, the book of Isaiah, specifically this passage, it's really pointing to Christ, right? Mm. That Emmanuel shall be sent, God with us. And that's really the message that's been, been given here, that a lot of things will go on. The, prof, the prophetic word is that from the line of David. And as they relinquish control, that's kind of trying to uh, uh, kind of mess with that prophetic uh, outcome. But Christ will always come through for us. So here they are, interception with your son, a remnant, shall return. Mm -hmm. And let's, uh, let's see what happens. Lisa, could you read verses 4 through 9 okay. of chapter 7 of Isaiah? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And say to him, Take heed and be quiet. Do not fear or be faint-hearted. For these two stubs of smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria, and the son of Remaliah, because Syria... 
Ephraim and the son of Remaliah have plotted evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and trouble it, and let us make a gap in its walls for ourselves, and set a king over them, the son of Tabal, says the Lord God. It shall not stand, mm. nor shall it come to pass. Mm -hmm. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be broken, so that it will not be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remaliah's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Mm. Mm. Choice to make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would be the ideal response of King Ahaz at this point? Jason? Gratitude that God is telling him what is going to happen yep. and it's mm -hmm. that his enemies are not going to uh, outlast his kingdom. Even though he made a foolish decision just a mm -hmm. while back, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, God, thank you for not giving up on me. Anyone here had a second chance in your life? <laughs> <Yes>. You know, <laughs> both hands raised. Thank you for not giving up on me mm -hmm. and for showing me that while these people look so fierce, they're just smoking stubs. Yeah. <laughs> kind of an interesting description of them, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, verses 10 through 12. Jamie Jean, could you read that for us? The NASB says, Then the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Make it deep as shell or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Why not? God has offered, you know, he's still yeah. kind of yeah. wanting to go his own way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God has said, ask for, ask for a, t a sign, ask for a test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was, why would he not respond to that? Mm -hmm. Jason, that doesn't make sense. It appears that he has made a choice in his heart. He's made a decision mm -hmm. that he's not going to follow God. Mm -hmm. I mean, God's giving him all these opportunities, but, at the, but he's still saying, nope, I'm not going to listen to these messages. I'm not going to be grateful for what God's doing for me. I'm going to go my own way. Yeah. Mm. So there are other places in the scripture where the Lord says, put me to the test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, ask, ask for something mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any, any, any uh, mm -hmm. stories or any portions of Scripture where, where the Lord is not hiding from us at all? Mm -hmm. He's actually saying, let me, let me be involved in your world when it's falling apart. That's what's mm -hmm. happening yeah. here. Anyone think of a, a passage? Well, yes. I, can, I can think of one uh, in Malachi, Malachi chapter 3. Okay, I that's think the that's, very end of the yeah, uh, it's Old the Testament last, Scriptures. Yeah, the last, actually, it's the last, yeah, the last book of the, the Old Testament, almost the last chapter even, um, Malachi chapter 3. Um, and, and God himself says in verse 10, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And then he says, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will be not enough room to receive it. Mm. So there was talking about, um, God, I don't think I have enough uh, money to make mm. it through the month. Mm. Mm. But God says, no, put me first. Mm -hmm. Don't rob God, previous verse. Mm. Mm -hmm. Put me to the test and what? You'll be blessed. See what I'll do, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be blessed. Yeah. Maybe financially, maybe not. Maybe a friend will come and say, my garden went wild. Here's a bag of vegetables mm -hmm. or something, right? Mm -hmm. but, but you see God, it's a great example, Christian. You know what I've discovered, though? That oftentimes when I've heard people say, you know, I'm not going to test the Lord. Well, he has said that. But when I hear others say that, even today, um, I've come to realize that they don't have a full understanding of the character of God. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. a distrust. Mm -hmm. They don't fully see God as someone that they can really test or, or, or put their faith in yeah. because mm -hmm. they don't know him. Mm -hmm. And Ahaz has evidently, he's mm -hmm. been departing from a knowledge of the, of the mm -hmm. true God and he don't, doesn't trust him anymore. Mm -hmm. Jamie Jean, I need your help. I totally forgot <laughs> the lady who during World War II helped uh, protect Jews and help them escape. And she'd put her hand on the Bible. And oh. Say, oh, what was her name? Um, we'll get an email from somebody. 
Oh. Yeah, okay. I should know this. I'm Jewish. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she would... She, well, there was a, there has been several. And yeah, there was but one, this one, she would point a Bible yeah. text and say, Lord, Lord, you yeah. promised. Yeah, right? yeah. We'll get an email from someone in Europe <laughs> reminding us who that was. Um, you're going to be thinking, well, for the rest of the study. It's, a, it's okay. We'll have to ask our, our Hope Sabbath School members, send us an, who was it that said, Lord, you promised. We're not doing too well here. That's, that's hope at hopetv.org. But, you know, that's... If you trust God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you trust His promises, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when your world is falling apart, like Samisa said at the beginning, mm -hmm. I have to choose, God, can I just trust mm -hmm. totally trust in you? Mm -hmm. Or do I try to manufacture my, mm -hmm. my own way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lisa. And even when it's hard to trust His Word, just look back at your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God has brought you this far, and mm -hmm. if we're humble enough to say, you know what, I didn't deserve that raise, I didn't deserve this family, God was there consistently to bring me to this point. Mm -hmm. We just need to look back at our lives and have the humility to know that it was God who brought us this far, mm -hmm. and He's not going to disappoint us now. Sure. Mm -hmm. It was Corey Ten Boom, by the way. My oh. brain just connected to it. <laughs> but maybe there were others as well, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And I love that. It, it's like we heard earlier. Who will go? Whom shall I send? Who will go for yeah. us? Yeah. Yeah. And Isaiah just says, yeah, yeah. here am I, Lord. Mm. <laughs> you know, I trust you. Mm -hmm. yeah. He doesn't even know where he's going. So, yeah. so? Also think about Matthew 7, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Would you read that for yes. us? That's, uh, that's uh, taking us all the way to the words of Messiah yeah. that mm -hmm. Isaiah is talking about. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. In Matthew 7, verse 7. Reading from the New King James Version. It says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. So and the I'll Lord is just saying... Put me to the test. Ask. Mm -hmm. I think of another story where Jesus is walking on the water mm -hmm. and uh, Peter says, <laughs> can I walk over to you? <laughs> and Jesus says, come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you remember the story, mm -hmm. help me now, mm -hmm. everything's going well as yeah. long as what? He's, He's looking at Jesus. Jesus. That's right. Yeah. As long mm -hmm. as he keeps his eyes fixed on Jesus. Mm -hmm. When he, now I don't think his world was falling apart, but I think he probably turned around to wave to his friends, you know, <laughs> <laughs> walking on the water. <laughs> but when he turns his eyes away from Jesus, mm -hmm. his sink. world is falling apart, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And he begins to sink. Mm -hmm. There's got to be some great applications for us. We'll come back mm -hmm. a little later in our study. But uh, I have a more important question for you. What holds people back, Christian, I think you alluded to it a little, mm -hmm. from just taking God mm -hmm. at His word, from mm -hmm. believing the promises of God? What holds people back? What, what at times may have held us back mm -hmm. from really just taking God at His word? Lisa? I think Christian said it that we don't trust God. Mm -hmm. Either we don't trust He's big enough mm -hmm. or strong enough oh. or honest enough. There's some part of His character that our minds are refusing to yield. And at mm -hmm. the end of the day, either God is a liar or He's not. Mm -hmm. Either He's going to come through or He's not. Either He can do it or He's not. But many people are like in between. They're like, yeah, He can do this, but He can't do that. Mm -hmm. Or He mm -hmm. can bless in this area, but not. Either He is completely or not at all. And so we just have to take that leap of faith and trust that mm -hmm. it is what he's going to say that he's going to do. Mm -hmm. So, Samisa, how do I develop that trust? I mean, it's easy to say, well, you just don't trust God. Yeah. How, how do I do that? How do I develop that kind of, Jesus speaks about a childlike faith, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Your little one wants to yeah. jump. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she knows you'll catch her. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they know they know you'll be yeah. there for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of that love relationship, right? Yeah. How do we develop that with God? Y you pray for it. You can actually pray for that uh, faith. Lord, increase my faith. Because many times people are actually hurting well meaning Christians, devoted, because at some point in their life they prayed for something, they trusted, it didn't happen the way they expected it. They prayed for a sick child. They s prayed for a sick parent. They prayed and prayed, but the outcome was not what they expected. But if we turn back to Christ and say, restore my faith in you, mm -hmm. help me to trust you, mm 
-hmm. and he can help us. Maybe rather than praying for a specific outcome, we should just draw near to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Doesn't it say somewhere, draw near to God and, and he will draw, draw near, near to you? To you. Yeah. Yep. So it's like draw near to him so that whatever happens, mm -hmm. whether my child lives or dies, mm -hmm. whether my mm -hmm. country collapses or comes back into stability, mm -hmm. that the Lord is with me yes. in the midst yes. of that, Christian. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and also, you know, it may not be that we just simply don't trust God. Mm -hmm. It could also be that we lack patience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we, and we <laughs> just, you know, oh, I yeah. trust God, <laughs> yeah. but I need this resolved yeah. like now. right now. Yeah. 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 And so all of a sudden yeah. we find ourselves putting yeah. our hands into what we shouldn't be mm -hmm. simply because we don't have the patience to wait, yes. Yes. to wait yeah. upon the Lord, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're quoting some scripture in my mind when you say that, wait on the Lord, be of good mm -hmm. courage, yes. mm -hmm. and He will strengthen mm -hmm. your heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. And strengthening your heart may be to wait a little longer than you yeah. thought, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's yeah. go back to Isaiah chapter seven, because even though King Ahaz is so set in his waywardness that he doesn't even want to ask God for a sign, the Lord says, I'm going to give you a sign anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a sign that's much broader than just for this king, mm -hmm. because he's not looking for one anyway. Mm -hmm. It's actually a sign for the whole human family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jason, how does it read in your Bible in verse 14 of Isaiah chapter 7? I've got the New King James Version here. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And Emmanuel means? God, God with, with us. us. So there's a cryptic clue that this is something much mm -hmm. bigger than just here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some Hebrew scholars argue that this word can just be translated a young woman. But there's nothing that remarkable about a young yeah. woman conceiving mm -hmm. and having a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. What is remarkable, though, is if a virgin conceives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that child is not just called a remnant shall return, yeah. mm -hmm. but Emmanuel, yeah. mm -hmm. God with us. God with us. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, how do we know that this prophecy 700 years before the birth of Messiah mm -hmm. is actually referring to the Messiah who will come. How do we know that? Anybody? What gives you confidence? I'd like to go to Matthew. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Matthew, well, let's see what he said. Who'd like to read that? Samisa, could you read it for us? In Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. Now, Matthew didn't always believe that Jesus was the Messiah, did he? Mm -mm. He was the CPA, worked <laughs> for the Internal <laughs> Revenue Service as a tax collector. But one day, Jesus came to him and said, follow me. Mm -hmm. And there was something about that interaction that changed Levi Matthew's heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he left everything, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does he write in his gospel to me? So in Matthew chapter 1, Verses uh, 21 through 23. Verses 21 to 23, Matthew 1, reading from the New King James Version. It says, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord throughout the prophets, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel, which translates God with us. Matthew even gives the translation in case we didn't know what Emmanuel <laughs> meant. Now, I like what you said earlier, Lisa. We either believe that the Holy yeah. Spirit is speaking through these prophets, mm -hmm. or they're all just making it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Matthew boldly declares what was said 700 years earlier yeah. by the Holy Spirit yeah. Yeah. through the prophet Isaiah was talking about Jesus, yeah. the mm -hmm. Messiah who's come. Yeah. Lisa? And I think what's so special about this prophecy is God saying, you're, you're having trouble trusting me because you think I don't understand what you're going through. I'm going to send my only begotten son mm -hmm. to come into the world to go through all the things that you experience so that we're without excuse. Whenever we face situations, we're like, God doesn't understand. Well, Emmanuel, 
God was here in the flesh. He did live the lives that we live. He was exposed to all the difficulties that we are. Of course he understands and that gives us faith to trust in him. He knows what it's like to be you. He knows what it's like to go through the trials that you go through. Mm -hmm. How do we know that this baby that was prophesied that a virgin would conceive and bear a child is, is not just an ordinary child? That's mm -hmm. how some would explain it. Well, go just a couple of chapters down to chapter 9, <laughs> where it speaks about this child. Uh, Jason, do you have that? Uh, verses 6 and 7? Yes. Uh, what does it say about this child? I've got the New King James Version here. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Mm. This is no ordinary child. Mm -mm. <laughs> government upon his shoulders, mm. name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, mm -hmm. Everlasting. Mm. Everlasting Father, mm -hmm. Mm. Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isaiah gives us another glimpse in chapter 11 uh, about this child who is to come. These are all the wonderful prophecies. Maybe, maybe Jesus on the road to Emmaus pointed to some of these. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isaiah chapter 11. Jamie Jean, if you have that for us and you could read the first five verses yes. for us. The NASB says, Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the w Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and strength, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision by what his ears hear. But in the righteousness, he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Mm. Also, righteousness will be the belt about his loins and faithfulness, the belt about his waist. This is speaking about Emmanuel. Yeah. Yes. By the way, it even points all the way forward to a final judgment mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. those who reject the mercy mm -hmm. and grace of God, mm -hmm. well, they cry for the rocks to fall on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a picture that I just want us to see about the revelation of this child born of a virgin called Emmanuel. In, in what for many Christians is their favorite verse in the whole Bible. It's John <laughs> chapter 3. Yeah. Verses 16 and 17. Some of you have memorized it, mm -hmm. but I want to hear it again. Maybe someone's watching Hope Sabbath School today and they've never heard this verse. Mm -hmm. what, what was the mission of Emmanuel? Mm. Mm. Who has John 3? Verses 16 and 17. Christian? Sure. Uh, New King James Version. Uh, John chapter 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hmm. So the mission of Emmanuel, God with us, is? To save us. To save us. To save. Yeah, you call his name Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Yeshua, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because he will save his people from, mm -hmm. from, from their, their sins. sins. Yes. Mm -hmm. He'll, he'll mm -hmm. rescue us, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the sign that's given way back 700 years earlier. Mm -hmm. When did you come to the place where you recognized, wow, that's, that's really true, you know? Mm -hmm. that's, God really did intervene into mm -hmm. human history. Mm -hmm. Some of you grew up in Christian families, right? Mm -hmm. But not all of you. Jamie Jean, you didn't grow up in a mm -hmm. Christian family. No, didn't. So you didn't grow up from a child hearing Mm -mm. that Jesus is the Messiah, Savior of the world. Yeah. When did you come to that place where it, you realized that, that all, all of this was pointing to mm -hmm. Jesus? Well, it was a long journey for me, um, but I started to question it when I was about 10 or 11 because 
God actually intervened in my life and actually saved my life. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, I started searching. In a physical way, you mean? In a you physical were... way. Okay. So I would have, if I would have made a different decision, I would have ended up in a car accident, one in which I would have died. Mm -hmm. So, um, or most likely died. And so I started to realize that there must be something beyond what I can see, mm -hmm. what I can hear, what I can touch, and that, that, that something actually cares about me. <laughs> and so that started a long journey of searching and understanding and then realizing that God is a personal God mm -hmm. who speaks into our lives, who has spoken into my life many, many times, sometimes through other people, sometimes through his words, sometimes I actually heard his voice, like when I was a child, um, where God speaks into our life and the God of the universe speaks into your life and intervenes in your life. That means his, he cares for you and mm -hmm. you may pray for something and your world is falling apart and he doesn't answer it the way you expect him to or when he does, but he does keep his promises. Because I think of this promise and I think of the, the original promises back in Genesis 3.15 to the woman and that he's, he will keep his promise to you. It may not look the way you expect it, but he will keep it. And he is with you and he is with you in the journey and he, he suffers with you. Mm. You know, as you were sharing your testimony, I thought about this book, you know, at the beginning, if you're just joining the program, I offered a, a audio book, digital download of this book, Radical mm -hmm. Evidence. There's a testimony in here of a young Orthodox Muslim girl mm -hmm. who decided to take God at his word mm -hmm. and she prayed a prayer in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's chapter one of the book. You can get your copy of the audio book by writing to us, sshope at hopetv.org. Mm -hmm. Just put free offer. But I, I like what you said, yeah. Jamie Jean, a simple prayer, even the yeah. prayer of a child, yeah. Yeah. Yes. of taking God at his word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why would we not yeah. do that? And the answer is, we haven't got to know his character, yeah. Yeah. that he loves yeah. us yeah. so much yeah. that he'd send Emmanuel yeah. Yeah. Yes. to be yeah. with us yes. and to yeah. save us. The more we get to know him, he says, ask, yes. mm -hmm. right? And I, I, you'll receive, seek and you'll find. Mm -hmm. yes. He's not hiding from us. Samisa. Mm -hmm. That was interesting that the entire chapter is starting off with a king who's so wicked. Yes. And mm -hmm. this wicked king even sacrificed his own son. But in all that, he's saying, I'm going to send a Messiah to save you. That's how mm -hmm. Christ is desperate mm -hmm. to save us from our mm -hmm. sins. So no one has come too far mm -hmm. from his grace. Mm -hmm. He's still pleading with humanity. Mm -hmm. And he's opening up his arms saying, I can save mm -hmm. you. So let's hyperspace forward seven centuries. Mm -hmm. And let's look at two, two passages of scripture. One in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14. And the other one in the letter of 1 John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. First, verse 14 of chapter 1 of John's Gospel. What does that say? Jason, would you read it for us? I've got the New King James Version here, John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, who was this Word who became mm. flesh? Well, you can read back in the beginning of the chapter. Who, who was this Word? Jesus. Jesus. The and Word God. was with God. The and the Word was God. Was God. Was God. He is Emmanuel, yeah. mm -hmm. God with us. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. God with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. With God, was God, became flesh and dwelt among us. Now look at the testimony in 1 John chapter 1, 1 to 3. Uh, I think the Apostle John gets a little excited when he starts sharing mm -hmm. about connecting mm -hmm. with Emmanuel, God with us. Lisa, could mm -hmm. you read for us the first three verses of 1 John chapter 1? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Mm. Now some might say it's easy for John to say that he was there. 
you know, he, he, <laughs> he saw Jesus, touched him, right? Yeah. He heard the voice of Jesus. And so, yeah, Emmanuel, God with us, that was so very real. And of course, that's his testimony mm -hmm. in First mm -hmm. John chapter 1. But that was 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. How can we experience Emmanuel, God with us today? How can we do that? Jamie Jean? I think by inviting him into, into your life, I experience the love of God. I experience the intervention of God many times in my life. I, he answered my prayers before I even knew how to pray. But we have to have an opening heart. We have mm. to have an open heart. We have to seek after him mm -hmm. with whatever tools, whatever resources we have in our heart and our mind and you know, surrender to him. So someone's listening and they're saying, Jamie Jean, I'll do it. I'm going to invite <laughs> Jesus into yeah. my life. Mm -hmm. How does he do that according to the scripture? How does Jesus, today, I mean, Jesus died, rose again, ascended to heaven. Bible says he's at the right hand oh. of the mm -hmm. throne of the majesty in heaven, right? Yeah. He's interceding for us, our great high priest. Yeah. How does, when you say come into my life, how does he do that? Well, there, there are, we don't have to guess. It's yeah. in the Bible somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Christian, are you going to John chapter 14? Yes. Would you yes. read it and then comment on, on it for us? Sure. John chapter 14, uh, verses uh, 16 to 18. And it says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Oh, mm. hold on to that powerful text. Mm. By the way, when he says, I will pray the Father, he will send you another mm. Mm -hmm. helper, another comforter. Parakletos is the word, mm -hmm. one who comes alongside. Mm. If he's another, who's the first one? Who's the other one? It's Emmanuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. God with us. It's Amen. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and I'm not an expert on Greek, but they tell me when it says another, the word that's used there means another of the same kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's another like me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Except, what is it about the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? What is it about the Holy Spirit that Jesus would say, it's actually good, I'll go away, I'll pray the Father, and he'll send mm -hmm. another comforter. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's the difference between Emmanuel, who's come into the human family as Jesus of Nazareth, and the Holy Spirit, the other helper. Help me, someone. What's Think, the difference? Well, well it, he, Jesus said in verse 17, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Uh, which you? Is that just you or you or you or all, all of us? Of us. <laughs> well, we call that omnipresence, right? right? Mm -hmm. when, when the Son of God, the Word, Yes. was made flesh, mm -hmm. he came into humanity, mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. born of a virgin, just like the prophet Isaiah foretold. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he is limited. Mm -hmm. He can't be in more than one place at the same time. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit can be with you and you and mm -hmm. with your wife back home and with your husband and with parents back in Kenya. Mm -hmm. He can be with all of us where we are, not only with us, but in us. In, us. in us. But then comes that startling verse, Christian, that you read. The last verse, verse 18. Because it's not just the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit who be in you. What does it say? It says, I will not leave you orphans. I, Jesus is speaking, mm -hmm. I will come to you. Mm -hmm. So he comes to us yeah. in the presence of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. He wants that intimate relationship mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, like Ahaz, hopefully we've not wandered so far away, but maybe Uzziah or maybe Josiah, mm -hmm. some following, some not. He says, put me to the test. Invite me to be active in your life. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to show how much I love you yes. by sending Emmanuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. He's going to save you yeah. and the world, all who will believe. So how do you respond? Uh, what would you say to a person who's listening, who's watching the program today, and they say, wow, it sounds too good to be true. I mean, it just sounds, what would you say to them? Lisa. Uh, there's another verse that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Ah. So try it for yourself and taste and see for yourself. And 
um, though we can promise, no one has um, <laughs> refused that taste. It's so good mm -hmm. and it's real and You're quoting from yours. Psalm 34, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Ta taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. And then it says, blessed or happy is the person who trusts in Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Jamie Jean, that little prayer, God, yeah. will, you, will you be active in my life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I've told people, pray with your eyes open. What does that mean? <laughs> it means look and see what God does yeah. Yeah. when you step a little step of faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. And God says, I want to be active in your life. Anybody else, how do you respond to this invitation? Sounds too good to be true. Jamie Jean? What do you have to lose? Just, try, just test him. Mm. Test him. He invites us to test him. So, I, you know, often I have a mixed background. And so I have a lot of friends and a lot of family members who are atheists who believe very differently than I do. And in some of the discussions we have and we say, you know, all, you, you have an opportunity to gain something. Just try it for yourself. Mm. You, you have an opportunity to gain eternity. And, and just see, just see, because I, I think if we're witnesses for Christ and we show them that we have this peace, that we have this hope, that we have this sense of wholeness and purpose, that's something that they're drawn to. And so, uh, um, you know, we can offer them the opportunity of something better. I love that verse you brought, taste the sea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when we give them that opportunity, then it's up to the Lord our God. Yeah. 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 Not up to us, right? Yeah. yeah. And God is going to work in miraculous ways. I'm just so glad that you could join us for Hope Sabbath mm -hmm. School today. And I want to encourage you to take this free offer. You say, that sounds too good to be true. An audio book called Radical Evidence. Mm -hmm. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. And in the subject line, just put free offer. You'll hear stories like Jamie Gina shared, people who didn't know Jesus, who said, I'm going to, I'm going to take a chance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to believe that what Jesus is offering me is mm -hmm. true and see how God reveals himself in miraculous ways. I hope you'll take us up on that offer. But more than that, I hope you'll say, Jesus, be my Messiah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus, save me. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just want to trust you, even with my questions, even with people around me mm -hmm. saying, that's a foolish thing to do. Mm -hmm. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the person who trusts in Him. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, the world was falling apart back in Isaiah's day, but, but it's falling apart today as well. You, you are inviting us to taste and see that you're good. You're inviting us to trust you and let you be active in our lives. And I pray for each one that we would make that decision, not just today, but every day. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you work in miraculous ways. And we'll praise you. We'll praise you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Go out and be a blessing to those around you.